Number 10. The 9th Roman Legion was known to be one of the oldest and toughest Roman legions around. Whenever a town or city needed close guarding or troublemakers needed to be removed, the 9th Legion were there to help. While their history is well recorded, there's something that's always puzzled historians. What happened to the infamous 9th Legion after the year 108 AD? Around 43 AD, the 9th Legion was brought to Britain by Emperor Claudius as part of his quest to take the region. They fought valiantly and even managed to create new cities and towns in the north of England. This point in history was filled with war and turmoil, and unfortunately the 9th found themselves in the middle of this. In 61 AD, half of their men, around 2,000, were lost in battle against Boudicca. While this heavy loss would have affected other units, the 9th bravely marched on, determined to continue. Roman soldiers, especially those in the 9th, were dedicated to their post and would go to any length to preserve the Roman invasion. Over the next few decades, the 9th moved around England, founding the historic city of York. Battles, wars, and conflicts were also part of this period, and they continued to fight even at half strength. The English and other groups desperately wanted the 9th gone forever, and they were subject to attacks and ambushes. It's safe to say the Legion were unpopular, but who could be capable of wiping out an entire Legion trained to fight till the end? The final recorded history of the 9th Legion was in 108 AD in York. The 9th built a new wooden fort declaring the land theirs. After this declaration, the 9th Legion dropped off the map never to be seen or heard from again. Historians cannot agree on a singular reason why the Legion disappeared. The men were all highly trained and would fight until the end. Historians believe they may have been ambushed by another group in the city, but nobody knows for sure. Number 9 The Bermuda Triangle has become a focal part of pop culture, and almost everyone has heard the legend. Ships, planes, and boats all disappearing into the abyss, never to be seen again. While the Bermuda Triangle has garnered mass attention, there is another area of the world with just as many odd occurrences. The Alaska Triangle has continued to baffle experts for decades. The Triangle runs from Juneau, Anchorage, and Barrow, the northernmost part of the country. One legend that exists within the Triangle is that of the village of Portlock. Legend has it that a Sasquatch-like beast ripped through the settlement in the 1950s, eliminating all the villagers. Though none of these accounts can be verified, dozens of Bigfoots, Sasquatches, and Yetis have been spotted within the Triangle. More disturbingly, the Alaska Triangle is home to a plethora of mysterious disappearances. Despite being lightly inhabited, Alaska has the highest missing person rate in the U.S. On the 3rd of June, 2019, Shanna Oman left a residence in Fairbanks, Alaska and was looking for a ride back to her home in Eagle River. Unfortunately, Shanna's friend could not drive her home at the time as it was past midnight, and Shanna apparently went wandering to a cabin on Pleasant Valley Road in the Alaskan wilderness on June 4th. When Shanna never arrived home, her friends and family called the Alaska State Troopers to investigate. According to the AST, Shanna's phone last pinged off Shanna Hot Springs Road on June 4th, close to the cabin where she was last seen. Shanna's case is not unique, and it's disturbingly common for Alaskans to drop off the map and never be seen or heard from again. There has been little progress in Shanna's case, and she remains missing. If you have any information, you're asked to contact the Alaska State Troopers at 907-451-5100. Number 8. Despite being alive many centuries ago, the allure of King Tut persists. When King Tut was finally laid to rest, no expense was spared for the beloved ruler. His sarcophagus was laid to rest in a large burial chamber, and experts have spent decades trying to decipher the messages that lay within. But in 2020, a new, even more shocking discovery was made by scientists. While conducting radar scans on the tomb, Scientists found a new hidden chamber. The chamber is around 6 feet by 32 feet wide, large enough to house another set of remains. The area where the chamber was found was unexplored, and it's believed that this chamber holds the remains of Queen Nefertiti, the mother or stepmother of King Tut. 
Three years have passed and experts are still far from discovering what really lies within this secret chamber. An excavation will need to be conducted carefully, and scientists cannot agree on whether this really is the final resting place of one of Egypt's most popular and influential queens. And only time will tell. Number 7 October of 1957 would usher in a strange new time for the small idyllic village of Kersey, Suffolk, England. That morning, William Lang, Ray Baker, and Michael Crowley were out in the Kersey wilderness as part of their Royal Navy training. While walking, something bizarre happened to them, so bizarre that none of these men nor experts have ever figured out what happened. While the three men were walking, they became distracted by a church in the distance. The bells bellowed across the village, and according to the men, smoke rose from the halls. As they climbed the hill to overlook Kersey, a strange feeling struck them. As they looked over the hill, they saw the village of Kersey, but not any incarnation they could recall. Kersey had somehow become medieval-looking. There were scant homes, no phone lines or cars. The three boys were extremely confused and concerned, but had no choice but to keep moving through the village. They visited shops and peered into homes that had all but been abandoned. Thankfully, the men quickly reached a hill that took them out of Kersey. When they reached the top of the hill and looked back, the 1950s village of Kersey was in its place. Many have taken to calling this incident the Kersey time slip. Did these three men really fall back in time to the medieval period? Or is this nothing but a well-fabricated legend? Number 6 Clad in black suits, sunglasses, and hats, the men in black have become one of the most infamous legends in the U.S., if not in world history. Whenever there's a UFO sighting, the men in black are always mentioned. But who are they, and do they even exist? Many have claimed to have seen men in black agents, although there's no solid proof of their existence. In the 1980s, the existence of Majestic 12 came to light, a branch of the Men in Black. These agents were always present at UFO crashes and sightings, ready to take notes and wipe the memory of innocent civilians. MJ-12 are always said to be dressed in smart black suits with sunglasses. MJ-12 were allegedly formed in the wake of the Roswell crash, the catalyst for ufology and UFOs in pop culture. While there are many documented sightings of UFOs, nobody from the Men in Black has ever come forward to give their side of the story. It's not a stretch to believe that the government would have had a secret branch of highly trained agents who can wipe people's memories to keep the existence of UFOs under wraps. Are the Men in Black real, or do they merely exist thanks to films and pop culture? Well, we may never know. Number 5 the Baluchistan region sits between Pakistan, Iran, and Afghanistan, and has been a hub for culture and religion for centuries. These three countries, in their current incarnations, all hold claim to parts of Baluchistan, and many excavations have taken place here. A new discovery has brought mystery and intrigue to the area in more recent years. The Baluchistan Sphinx sits in the Hingol National Park near Karachi in Pakistan. The mysterious structure was uncovered recently, yet nobody can seem to agree on its origins. Some have claimed that the Sphinx is nothing but a natural rock formation, a product of centuries of weather patterns and human activity. Others believe the formation is man-made due to its resemblance to the Giza Sphinx. The large structure may have been created as part of an ancient Hindu temple that is yet to be explored. While there are dozens of pairs of eyes on the structure, Nobody can seem to agree on its origin, or whether it's man-made. Number 4 In 1872, workers in Meredith, New Hampshire were digging land to prepare for a building project when they encountered something bizarre. They saw a stone roughly 4 inches long in the dirt and soil below. While the stone was large, that was not what brought intrigue and speculation to this once quiet area. After the men unearthed the stone, they stood back in awe. They saw carvings on each side of the stone depicting the moon, arrows, and core. The men immediately reported their findings, and ever since, the Lake Winnipesaukee egg has persisted as a local legend. The stone itself is around 2.5 inches thick, which would have been exceedingly difficult for a person to carve. Some believe that the stone is a relic of an ancient civilization lost to the sands of time. 
but others believe it could have come from aliens. Given the precision of the carvings, many believe a human would not have been capable of such a feat. Did the Lake Winnipesaukee egg come from an alien race, or is it simply a misunderstood and misinterpreted relic? Number 3 Kofu, Japan, sits between Nagoya and Tokyo, making it the perfect place to raise a family and settle down. The otherwise quiet city is known across Japan for a very different reason, though. In 1975, a bizarre and unexplainable event occurred in Kofu, leaving a permanent mark on its residents. In the brisk February air of 1975, two boys were playing outside in the streets of Kofu. The two played happily together, running in the breeze and giggling. Just as the two boys were beginning to wind down, they spotted something above them. According to the boys, two orange glittering UFOs hovered above them. Suddenly, one of the UFOs raced off into the distance, leaving a glittering trail in its way. The boys followed the UFO and found its landing site, later telling their parents the UFO was around 7 feet tall and 15 feet wide. The two boys eagerly peered at the craft, waiting for something to happen, and it did. Two creatures emerged from the ship. These creatures were described as humanoids with unusually long arms and short bodies, standing at just four feet tall. One of the creatures reached out and touched Katsuhiro, one of the boys, rendering him paralyzed. His friend was able to grab him and the two ran home as fast as they could. They excitedly told their parents they'd just seen a UFO and aliens, but by the time their parents got to the scene, the mysterious craft was gone. Landing tracks were left behind, but nobody has ever been able to really get to the bottom of the Kofu UFO incident. Number 2 Kerala, India is no stranger to the mysterious and unexplainable. Throughout the state's history, there have been many reported bizarre occurrences, the most notable of which being the Red Rain of Kerala. One of the earliest documented occurrences of this phenomenon came on July 15, 1957. Residents of Malabar reported seeing large red droplets falling from the sky. As the red rains continued, it slowly began to change color to yellow. Again, in July to September of 2001, Kerala residents reported the red rains had returned, this time with a vengeance. The red rain stuck around much longer than it previously had and many were concerned the showers were a bad omen. Items of clothing and buildings were left stained from the red rains, and nobody has ever been able to uncover the true origins of this bizarre mystery. Some claim the rain is filled with alien cells, whilst the government once believed it resulted from space debris. Number 1 In the 1890s, explorers in the jungles of Indonesia made a stunning discovery. Amongst the trees and greenery lay a pyramid. For centuries, scientists have been trying to figure out who built this pyramid and why. Many experts have claimed the pyramid, named Gunung Pade, is actually the world's oldest pyramid, being anywhere from 5,000 to 20,000 years old. Many argue whether Gunung Pade classes as a pyramid, as well as arguing of its origins. Experts have been unable to find any sign of ancient societies in the area, and Gunung Padang may be the first evidence of this. Some believe an ancient Indonesian civilization used the area as a burial ground, hence the large stone slabs. Others have postulated the pyramid could have been a place of worship. We may only know its true origins once more evidence is uncovered. Number 10 31-year-old Devin Atkinson was last seen at his home on Newkirk Drive in Richmond, Virginia on September 20, 2022. According to his girlfriend, he left following an argument with a family member, taking only a pair of clothes with him. Devin was described as a loving and devoted father who would have never left his child behind. Devin's family believed he was taking a drive to cool off, but when he never came back, he was reported as missing. Devin's daughter told the media all she wants for Christmas is to have her dad home, a sentiment shared by the rest of Devin's family. Investigators have noted that Devin may have been driving a gray 2002 Chevrolet Tahoe at the time of his disappearance, with license plate TVS4216. Devin Atkinson is described as a black male with black hair, 
brown eyes, 6 foot 1 and 165 pounds. He has tattoos of Ariana and Grayson on one arm, a woman on the other, and the name Jess on his ring finger. Devin was last seen wearing a white tank top, gray sweatpants, black socks, and black slippers. He was also carrying an extra pair of clothes with it. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Richmond City Police Department at 804-646-5100, quoting case number 2022-0924-0226. Number 9. 39-year-old Christopher Dale Mock had been working hard to get his life back on track. He had struggled with substance abuse and recently overcame his issues and was now sharing a trailer with his girlfriend in Laramie, Wyoming in 2022. On July 2nd, 2022, Christopher left the trailer abruptly after telling her he needed to tell her something. According to the girlfriend, she fell asleep before he could tell her, so he went to shower, and when she awoke, Christopher was gone. Before leaving, Christopher had written his girlfriend a note which said, I love you, beautiful, and he had also left her a bracelet. There was every indication Christopher had planned on returning, which made his disappearance all the more haunting. In 2016, Christopher was involved in an accident which took his left leg. This accident had prevented him from working, and he was trying to get disability payments to help support the couple. When Christopher failed to return home and failed to return her calls, his girlfriend called the Laramie Police Department and reported him missing. According to reports, Christopher had taken only his phone with him, leaving behind his wallet, medication, and glasses. A year has now passed since Christopher disappeared, but there have been few updates in his case. Christopher Dale Mock is described as a white male with ginger red hair, blue eyes, 6 foot 2 and 140 pounds. Christopher is missing his left leg and requires crutches. He also has a scar on his abdomen and requires daily medication. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Laramie Police Department at 307 721 2526. Number 8. On September 20th, 2022, the police were called to an abandoned vehicle outside of an auto zone in Sterling, Virginia. After running the plates, they discovered it belonged to 34-year-old Emily Victoria Benjamin. When Emily was uncontactable, the car was taken to her mother's home. Emily's name was known to police in the area as just two weeks earlier, a welfare check had been requested on her. On September 2, 2022, the police were called to perform the welfare check by an unnamed party. During the assessment, officers were able to establish contact with Emily, who assured officers she was on a road trip and would be back in two weeks' time. Unfortunately, Emily never returned from the road trip, and the fate that befell her remains unknown. Emily Victoria Benjamin is described as a black female with brown hair, brown eyes, 5 foot 4 and 220 pounds. She has a birthmark on her left leg and wears glasses. She also requires medication for an unspecified condition. Anyone with information is asked to contact Detective John Barone at 540-727-7900, quoting case number 2209-0163. Number 7. When the car of 46-year-old Alicia Lynn Griffin was discovered abandoned at a car wash in Tijuana, Mexico, her family immediately contacted officers in both the U.S. and Mexico. On February 28, 2019, Alicia left her Sacramento home amid a mental health crisis. According to the Charlie Project, Alicia has bipolar disorder and schizophrenia, for which she takes medication. Her family were helping and supporting her through her time of need and crisis, but she was unable to leave before they could intervene. Witnesses later came forward claiming to have seen Alicia at the Inglewood Airport on March 1st, a sighting that came the day before her car and items were found abandoned in Tijuana. Alicia Lynn Griffin is described as a biracial female with brown hair, brown eyes, 5 foot 7 and 200 pounds. Her ears are pierced and she has the tattoos of a skull and crossbones with roses on her shoulder blade, a red circle outlined in black on her left calf a lotus flower on the inside of her left ankle, and a Native American man on the outside of her left ankle. Anyone with information is urged to contact the Sacramento Police Department at 916-808-0560, quoting case number 1964101.
Number 6. On January 21st, 2022, first responders in Felicity, Ohio received a troubling call from resident Zachary Scott. According to Scott, he had found his friend, 51-year-old Roger Shane Bruce, unresponsive in his car on Laurel Point Isabel Road in Washington Township. During the call, Scott alleges to have administered medication to his friend, which is known to reverse the effect of some illegal substances, before ominously disconnecting the call. When first responders finally got a hold of Scott again, he told them that Shane had taken off running just minutes after apparently being unresponsive. Investigators didn't buy Scott's story from the beginning and continually applied pressure during investigations. Eventually, on January 25, 2022, they were able to charge Zachary Scott with obstructing official business and falsification after he changed his story. While being held in prison, Zachary Scott broke down and told investigators he might know where Shane was. Unfortunately, this lead was nothing but a dead end. It's also come to light in the months since Shane's disappearance that Zachary willingly tampered with evidence, removing Shane's wallet, backpack, and a laptop, preventing them from being used as evidence. In 2023, Zachary Scott pleaded guilty to abuse of a corpse and tampering with evidence in exchange for a five-year sentence. Investigators were never able to secure homicide charges against him, and Shane's case remains unsolved. Over the past year, Scott has told the police several stories of where Shane could be, but none of these have led anywhere. Investigators are appealing to anyone who may have had contact with either man on January 21st, 2022 to come forward. Roger Shane Bruce is described as a white male with brown hair, brown eyes, 5 foot 9 to 5 foot 10 and 160 to 173 pounds. He was last seen wearing a white Nike shirt, blue jeans and navy blue shoes. Anyone with information is asked to contact Detective Quinn Carlson of the Brown County Sheriff's Office at 937-378-4435, quoting case number 220120. Number 5. On August 16, 2021, motorists making their way down Highway 200 near Montana came across an abandoned gold Lexus with Idaho license plates. Some were able to get a close look and noticed that there was a note in the windshield that said, ran out of gas, please do not tow. God bless, Matt. The Missoula police were called to the scene and they discovered the car belonged to 25-year-old Matthew Ryan Calais. Matthew's parents were contacted, but they'd not heard from him that day. According to his parents, he left home without his phone or wallet and likely began walking to look for help. Two years have now passed since Matt went to look for gas and the Missoula Police Department continues to be baffled by this case. Matthew Ryan Kalang is described as a white male with brown hair, blue eyes, 6 foot and 180 pounds. At the time of his disappearance, Matthew was sporting a shaved head and was not carrying his phone or wallet with him. Anyone with information is asked to contact Eddie McLean of the Missoula Police Department at 406-552-6303 quoting case number 2021-34383. Number 4. 19-year-old Charlesetta Lynn Grau was last seen near Park Street North in St. Petersburg, Florida on August 27, 2022. According to the Charlie Project, Charlesetta had multiple mental disorders and the mental capacity of a 7-year-old. So when the flag was raised about her disappearance, the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office sprung into action. There are rumors that Charles Seta may have traveled to Illinois or Indiana, where she has family. But there's a much darker rumor, too. Some have stated she left with an unnamed man for Tennessee. So far, there's been no evidence to back up any of the rumors surrounding Charles Seta's disappearance. Her family are desperate to have her home and are worried due to her vulnerable nature. Charles Seta Lynn Grau is described as a white female with brown hair, brown eyes, 5 foot 4 and 100 pounds. She has pierced ears and a scar on her forehead. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office at 727-585-6483, quoting case number SO2383119. Number 3.
40-year-old Orgas Tyrone Harris mysteriously disappeared from his home in St. Augustine, Florida on August 1st, 2022. Orgas's aunt went by his house that afternoon to pick him up and take him to work, but he told her he couldn't go because he had to handle business. His aunt shrugged it off, telling her nephew that she would return tomorrow. According to his aunt, several days passed without contact, which led to her reporting him missing to the St. John's County Sheriff's Office. Unfortunately, Orgis didn't tell his aunt or anyone else what business he had to handle before she left his home that afternoon. When the police checked his home, his phone was left behind, which was extremely out of character for him. With this ominous statement, investigators are concerned that Orgis may have met with foul play. Orgis Tyrone Harris is described as a black male with brown hair, brown eyes, 5 foot 8 and 200 pounds. He has tattoos of Ty on his right ankle and the letter I on his right arm. At the time of his disappearance, he had gold teeth and a missing or chipped front tooth. Anyone with information is asked to contact Mark Kapelka of the St. John's County Sheriff's Office at 904-824-8304. Number 2 52-year-old Michael Howard Havkost was last seen by his sister Sarah Holly on September 4, 2020 in Killeen, Texas. 2020 had been a tough year for Michael and his girlfriend Becky. He had lost his job due to the pandemic and eventually the two ended up homeless. Thankfully, Michael's sister was able to help the couple out by getting them a room at the Days and Night Inn Motel in Killeen. Michael and Becky were grateful for the boost and were working hard to find new jobs to get themselves back on their feet. Sarah said she visited her brother on September 4, 2020 and didn't return until September 14, 2020. Upon her second visit, she found the motel room empty and realized it had been over a week since anyone had seen him. It's unknown why his girlfriend Becky didn't report this sooner to investigators. Motel staff confirmed they had not seen Michael for around a week and a missing person report was immediately filed. When officers searched his room, they found everything intact. Michael had disappeared, leaving behind his wallet, phone, shoes, glasses, and most importantly his hearing aids, which he could not hear without. Investigators have not been able to rule out foul play in Michael's disappearance and are eager to talk with anyone who may have any information. Becky, Michael's ex-girlfriend, has been repeatedly contacted by law enforcement who are eager to chat with her, but she's yet to respond. During a medical evaluation, Michael mentioned to medical staff that he felt he may have been taken advantage of financially by Becky. She was linked to his cash app, which gave her complete control over Michael's finances and allegedly allowed her to spend his money. Michael Howard Havkost is described as a white male with blonde or strawberry blonde hair, hazel eyes, 5 foot 8 and 160 pounds. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Killeen Police Department at 254-501-8860. Number 1 61-year-old Doris Wade Carter and her girlfriend Kelly Moriarty mysteriously disappeared from the home they shared on McLean Drive in Plant City, Florida on December 16, 2011. Four days after the couple disappeared, their car was found abandoned on State Road 62 in Parrish, Florida. It would take several weeks for either woman to be reported missing, and there would be many more twists and turns in the case. In March of 2012, the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office made a stunning announcement. In September of 2011, a leg had washed ashore in St. Petersburg, Florida, and they had now identified that leg as belonging to 38-year-old Kelly Moriarty. Who disappeared with her girlfriend. This left investigators with several more questions but zero answers. Doris's daughter from a previous relationship told investigators her mother's relationship with Kelly was volatile. Investigators believe that Kelly and Doris met with foul play but cannot yet determine at the hands of whom. Doris Wade Carter is described as a white female with brown hair, hazel eyes, 5 foot 1 and 110 pounds. She has pierced ears, a tattoo of wings, a cross on her neck, and a surgical scar on her abdomen. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office at 813-247-8200, quoting case number 2012-48932. Number 10 
Between 259 and 210 BC, Qin Shi Huang ruled as the first emperor of the newly united China. Many struggled to adapt to the new leadership initially, and many were still used to feudal ways of life. Eventually, the people of China grew to love their new emperor, something that was expressed long after he was gone. In the 1970s, workers digging in Shaanxi came across a large pit. As they continued digging, they realized that they'd unearthed something incredible. Archaeologists were quickly informed of the hole, and within weeks, tents and camps had been set up. While excavating the area, the archaeologists revealed the men had uncovered the lost tomb of Emperor Qin Shi Huang. But that's not all. Scattered across several pits were over 8,000 life-size statues made entirely from terracotta. These statues depict warriors and knights and were commissioned by the emperor to take care of him in the afterlife. There are also horses and wagons made from terracotta, and each soldier is equipped with a weapon. Whilst the terracotta army is an enigma in itself, the actual final resting place of Qin Shi Huang is still up for debate. The tomb was heavily excavated when it was first discovered, but researchers have since backed off. Due to the presence of the terracotta army, they believe Qin Shi is buried somewhere within there, but the exact location remains a complete mystery. Number 9. Our Stone Age predecessors were proficient at hunting and capturing animals. After all, it was their only way to survive. In recent years, large kite lines have been discovered in Israel, Egypt, Jordan, and beyond. Scientists are still trying to determine how our ancestors could have been capable of making these structures. The structures are made mostly from stone, wood, and other natural debris. The guidelines work to guide the animals and the hunter toward each other for the best possible position. According to reports, these lines don't just run for tens of miles, but sometimes thousands. The intricate design and large scale of the lines have left experts baffled. We're only able to fully observe the lines from the sky, thousands of feet up. So how did a prehistoric society know how to arrange these? Many believe our ancestors were helped by aliens. This theory is especially popular when talking about the pyramids in Egypt. While we know where these lines come from and their purpose, the ingenuity behind them is still up for debate. Number 8. In the 1990s, a group of German archaeologists were excavating land high in the Turkish mountains when they made a stunning discovery. Near Urfa, amongst a hill, lay large carved pillars. These pillars stood 5.5 meters tall. Some were as wide as 20 meters, weighing at least 10 tons. Shortly after its discovery, it was named the Gobekli Tepe. Since the 1990s, experts have been working on Gobekli Tepe to uncover the dark secrets that lay within. One expert, Klaus Schmidt, commented that the temple is 11,000 years old, making it the oldest structure in the world. Gobekli Tepe is rumored to be 6,000 years older than Stonehenge, which is considered to be one of the oldest monuments in the world. Scientists are continuing to uncover the secrets hidden within Gobekli Tepe. Number 7. In 1986, archaeologists working in Chengdu, China, made a spectacular discovery. Many years before this discovery, residents had uncovered jade gems and artifacts, but nobody had connected the dots. By 1986, a full excavation was ordered, and as they started digging, they struck gold. Within the soil lay jade and stone artifacts that were later dated as Bronze Age. Some of these artifacts stood 8 feet high, and the pits were full to the brim of precious jade gems. It would take several years for the scientists to uncover the name of the ancient civilization, of whose treasure they had just dug up, Seng Xingdui. More importantly, the presence of these people stops mysteriously, and nobody has ever been able to determine why the Sen Xingdui disappeared. Number 6. Deep in the deserts of Jordan lay an unexplainable mystery. The Kat Shabib is a wall that runs for over 93 miles. It was first discovered in 1948 by British explorers and colonists, and since then, it's been a challenge to get to the bottom of it. The wall measures an impressively long length, but why and who built it? Unfortunately, these are all questions scientists have been unable to answer. The mystery of the Kat Shabib will likely remain that way unless new evidence is uncovered. Number 5. 
In the barren lands of Turkey, Syria, and Jordan lay what experts have been calling the Big Circles. The existence of these circles has been known for many decades, but archaeologists have still been left baffled by them each time. According to experts, lines in the ground were not uncommon in prehistoric times, and evidence of prehistoric people using shapes to round up animals is present. Experts can understand that, but they cannot understand the presence of the big circles that measure 1,312 feet in diameter. The circles are marked using piles of stones, and the shape is almost perfect. Archaeologists have dated the big circles to be around 2,000 years old. But how did prehistoric people manage to make such structures without the assistance of air travel? More importantly, what did the big circles represent, and what were they used for? Number 4. Scotland is a treasure trove for archaeologists and amateurs alike. Many would love nothing more than to spend time there unearthing artifacts and figuring out how they came to be. And that's precisely what happened in Scotland. According to records, the Kokno Stone, as it's become known, was first discovered sometime in the 1960s. The stone measured 42 feet by 47 feet and weighs several tons. Unfortunately, vandals and teenagers found the site of the stone and began to deface it, leading to its burial. It wasn't until the late 2010s that the stone saw the light of day again. Those who are interested in the stone can now view it at the Kilmartin Museum, but even experts here are baffled by the stone's purpose. Archaeologists have found over 100 prehistoric symbols carved into the stone. Some of these symbols depict life with animals and humans, but others were more mysterious. One section of the stone is covered with cup and ring marks, bizarrely perfect circles carved near one another. Archaeologists in Scotland have yet to get to the bottom of the Kokno stone and what purpose it served in the prehistoric world. Number 3. The Romans have left us with many artifacts and cultural influences, and they've entirely shaped the landscape in parts of Europe. One artifact in particular has caught the attention of experts the Roman dodecahedron. These 12-sided objects have continued to baffle experts for decades. These shapes are mostly made from bronze but can also be made with stone. They have 12 sides and the middle is hollowed out. Some of the dodecahedrons may be large while others are mostly petite, but nobody has ever been able to uncover their purpose. While they serve as a nice decoration, their true significance is yet to be revealed. Some have theorized that the dodecahedrons may align with calendars in the 12-month year. Others have speculated they could be toys for babies and children, or even a very early die for playing games. Number 2. In 2022, archaeologists at the site of Stonehenge in England uncovered even more fascinating artifacts. Stonehenge receives millions of visitors each year, and despite the structure being over 10,000 years old, we're still trying to get to the bottom of its purpose. The BBC reported that archaeologists at a patch of land found anomalies below the grass and dirt. As they dug, they uncovered large pits around one square mile large. Several of these pits were detected thanks to digging and ground-penetrating radar. These pits had previously laid undiscovered in one of the world's most researched sites. Experts believe the prehistoric people who called Stonehenge and the surrounding areas home used these pits to hunt animals. These pits would have served as traps where humans could grab the animal once it had been dispatched. It's important to note that this remains a theory, and more evidence is needed before a solid conclusion can be reached. Number 1. In the woods of Salem, New Hampshire, lies what many call America's Stonehenge. While the town of Salem needs no introduction, it has far more mysterious and macabre stories than just witches and burning. The exact date of discovery is up for contention, but what we do know is that in 1982, America's Stonehenge was renamed Mystery Hill by its owner. Mystery Hill is a bizarre replica of the real Stonehenge in England. It contains over 100 stones standing at a whopping 30 feet tall. Like the original Stonehenge, America's Stonehenge lines up perfectly with the celestial calendar, aligning perfectly with the winter and summer solstices. Mystery Hill also encompasses stone huts, chambers, and a speaking tube, and what's been described as a sacrificial stone table. Some have speculated the monument was built by witches and wizards to hold sacrifices during their holidays, 
and according to the site owner, the stones are believed to be 4,000 years old. Independent archaeologists have dated them to be around 2,000 to 3,000 years old, dispelling the myth that they were created by an ancient civilization. Today, Mystery Hill serves as an attraction for those in New England, and it brings in hundreds of visitors each year. The true purpose behind its construction will continue to remain a mystery. Number 10. This tiny creature, captured under 1,000 magnification via electron microscope, is actually one of the most formidable creatures in the world, and scientists have no idea why. This is a tardigrade, a microscopic animal with eight legs and a strange face. While they look soft, they're covered in a layer of cuticle, which makes them almost immune to damage. Tardigrades can also bizarrely hold a layer of water around their bodies to prevent them from dehydrating. But that's not the real mystery here. The real secret is how these microscopic creatures withstand 500 times more radiation than human beings. When placed beside one another, seeing a tardigrade without using an electron microscope or other equipment would be impossible. History has taught us that humans cannot withstand radiation and a leak could cause long-lasting, devastating effects. Scientists are continuing their research into these bizarre little creatures in the hopes that they may help us in the future as a species. Number 9 In October of 2017, residents of Wales received the fright of their lives when they saw a gang of octopuses walking down the beach. The first sighting was made one evening after dark when everyone had gone home. The witnesses described the event saying that they were walking on the tips of their legs, and many more continued to emerge from the waters. Scientists were immediately called into the area, but so far, nobody has ever been able to explain why 20 octopuses suddenly wanted to come onto land. One theory is that the sea was too rough for them, but this has never been confirmed. Number 8 Alzheimer's, sometimes known as dementia, is perhaps one of the most terrifying diseases the human body could be subjected to. It's estimated that almost 1 million people in the UK are living with dementia, a disease that requires round-the-clock care and attention. Disturbingly, the instances of dementia are rising, with the Alzheimer's Society projecting that by 2040, at least 1.6 million people will be living with dementia. One of the most common symptoms of dementia is forgetfulness. This starts with the affected person forgetting daily tasks or conversations. Eventually, this forgetfulness dissolves to a genuinely terrifying level. Those with advanced dementia may finally forget to eat and drink, proving it to be fatal. Perhaps the most terrifying part about this disease is that we have no idea what causes it or how people get it. Some doctors believe it's down to genetics, while others highlight lifestyle choices. Research has shown that everyone is susceptible to the disease, and our lives can change instantly. The research into dementia continues, but for now, it appears to be a losing battle. Number 7 In 1683, a great ball of fire flashed through the window of an English church sending shockwaves down the spines of churchgoers. Some believed that it was divine intervention or that it was a message directly from God. Since 1683, scientists have concluded that what people saw that day was not a message from God, but the phenomena of ball lightning. Ball lightning is a rarely occurring type of lightning that presents as bright balls of light. Those who have been lucky enough to witness ball lightning say the balls range in size from a few centimeters to several meters. The bright flashes are the most unsettling part of the lightning, and it's caused several panics. Despite being documented, scientists are still unable to determine how ball lightning occurs. Number 6 The human brain is a complex and confusing structure, comprising millions of neurons firing each minute. Just one crossed wire can send the entire structure into overdrive. Psychiatry has thankfully come a long way from the days of old, when those who needed help the most were thrown into asylums to rot. With each year that passes, new conditions and definitions are added to the DSM, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. 
one such condition that falls under the umbrella of delusions and dissociation is clinical lycanthropy, or the belief that one has shapeshifted into an animal. Oftentimes, patients believe they've been transformed into a werewolf or other powerful animal. These delusions are often brought on by other conditions, such as schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, dissociative identity disorder, and depression. This condition can also be caused by a neurophysical trigger, making it all the more terrifying. Some patients who have presented this bizarre disorder were involved in accidents or took potent substances which changed their brain chemistry. In one case, a 25-year-old man from India in 2021 believed he was slowly transforming into a buffalo. The man was admitted for psychiatric care, where he admitted to performing inappropriate acts on his buffalo over a six-month period. After the acts had taken place, he claimed to see parts of his body slowly being taken over by a buffalo, but his friends and family saw no such changes. He tried to stop the spread of the buffalo DNA by obsessively washing his hands and body, but this didn't help. A report was written on the case to PubMed and noted that the man had extremely high obsessive-compulsive tendencies and was likely suffering from body dysmorphic disorder. He was given a combination of medication and psychotherapy, which drastically improved his quality of life. While this case was successful, who knows how many other cases are out there? Psychiatrists don't sufficiently understand this condition, and not knowing the root cause makes this condition all the more terrifying. Number 5 With each decade that passes, the total life expectancy of human beings rises. While it's good news that we get to live more of our lives, it's also a source of bad news. An aging population, when also faced with a falling birth rate, presents a plethora of unique problems. Who will care for so many elderly people? And how will our system cope with the extra pressure? The elderly often require more medical care more frequently. And as we've seen, our doctors and hospitals are not cut out to handle an influx of new patients. Jean Calment currently holds the record of the oldest person in history, passing away at an astonishing age of 122. Newspapers and broadcasters worldwide flocked to Jean to find out what her secret was, but scientists were also curious behind the scenes. If she could live to 122, what is there to stop all of us from living this long? The main ethical concern that comes with living for longer is quality of life. At a certain point, the human body has disintegrated and aged to a point where even the most basic of tasks are impossible. Would it be right to subject a population to a longer life, even if that meant years of being stuck in front of a TV? The question of how long we can live is yet to be answered, but many scientists are making it their mission to find out. Number 4 Body Integrity Disorder is a relatively newly discovered psychiatric condition. Those who suffer from BID explain it as there being a disconnect between the physical and mental image of their body. BID gives sufferers the desire to amputate their limbs as they feel it's who they're supposed to be. This condition can manifest in limb amputation or limb paralysis, wanting to be deafened or wanting to become blinded. Some patients may also have a psychosexual crossover with the disorder, making treating it all the more complex. The condition usually emerges in young adulthood, leading sufferers down a dark and dangerous path. There are documented instances of people getting their limbs run over by a car or a train in a bid to become disabled. Most disturbingly of all, some surgeons are willing to perform unnecessary amputations for the right price. This has sparked a substantial medical ethics debate, and the world of psychiatry is still trying to understand what causes BID. One theory is that it's linked to missing gray matter in the brain. Unfortunately for sufferers, there is no cure, and patients will often be placed on medication and put through CBT in the hopes that their systems improve. Number 3 According to NASA, dark matter makes up over 80% of our universe but nobody has ever actually seen it, nor can they quantify it. Some scientists have devoted their entire careers to dark matter research and have come up with a theory about its composition. The prevailing theory is that dark matter is made from non-baryonic matter, although they're not 100% sure. Some scientists in the field argue that dark matter is made of baryons, which are things like protons, neutrons, and electrons. 
There are other particle types which have been put forth as candidates, but to date, nobody within the scientific community can come to an agreement. Space and time are far more complex than we're equipped to understand, and likely we will never get to the bottom of this puzzle. Number 2 Deep in the desolate woods of Siberia, Russia, lies one of the world's most mysterious craters, known as Potomsky Crater. In 1949, a geologist was wandering through the forest when he discovered the immense 130 to 160 meter wide crater. Inside the conical crater lay a small limestone structure. Parts of the conical structure measure up to 80 meters in height, and there is little debris to speak of in the area. As there's no debris, the broader scientific community has largely ignored the theory that the crater was formed by volcanic activity. Some believe it may have been caused by a meteor, but a lack of debris has again pushed this theory back. Since 1949, geologists and scientists have frequently visited the area looking for any clues. There's a widespread rumor in Siberia that the forest contains a large uranium store underground. Rumor has it that the Soviets began stripping the mine, resulting in an accident. As of 2023, the true origins of the Potomsky Crater are still up for debate. Number 1 Alien Hand Syndrome is perhaps one of the more baffling and bizarre conditions that doctors may encounter in their lifetimes. Alien Hand Syndrome occurs when one's hand is not under their own control. Sufferers of the disorder have reported their hand acting independently of them, with one woman finding her face being stroked by her left hand. Others have reported their hands throwing things and grabbing things they shouldn't, all while they have no control. For sufferers, it's almost like watching it happen through a lens and is comparable to being a puppet on a string. Scientists believe changes in brain activity and physical changes to the brain cause the disorder. Those who suffer from alien hand syndrome may lose control of their hands for a few days all the way to a few years. The condition will subside without warning, and the patient will be in control again. Unfortunately, there's no cure, and scientists are still unsure why alien hand syndrome occurs and what to do about it. Number 10 On December 19, 2018, 65-year-old Darlene Elizabeth Johnson was released from the care of the North Shore Medical Center on Northwest 95th Street in Miami, Florida. Staff at the center assumed she would make her way home, but sadly this was not the case. Days later, Darlene was reported missing to the Miami-Dade Police Department. Unfortunately, very little is known about Darlene, and all we know is that she frequented the areas of Miami Shores, Gladeview, Liberty Square, West Little River, and Model City. She also had ties to Broward, Leon, Gadsden, and Opalaka. Darlene is described as a black female with brown hair, brown eyes, and about 5 foot 1. Anyone with information is asked to contact Suzanne Gowdy of the Miami-Dade Police Department, quoting case number PD-1912-024-30205. Number 9 in 1932, pilot George Palmer was flying over Blythe, California when he saw something in the dirt below him. Gigantic lines that formed into the shape of animals, figures, and spirals dotted the landscapes. The Blythe intaglios have been known to natives and locals for many centuries, and George Palmer simply rediscovered them in 1932. The landscape is dotted throughout the US and Southern America, with over 200 drawings like the ones in Blythe. They're believed to have been formed 450 to 200 years ago by the natives. The most extensive intaglios measured in at over 167 feet long and has left scientists stumped. The only way to view these figures is from the air, so how were they drawn? Like with the Nazca lines, the idea of aliens and UFOs comes into play. Some believe aliens have already visited us many centuries ago and gave us the technology necessary to progress. Aliens and UFOs may explain how the lines and drawings were made, but it doesn't explain why. Number 8 42-year-old Amy Wells Bridgman of South Weldon, North Carolina, was hailed as a loving and devoted mother. 
By 2013, she and her husband, Joseph, had been married for almost 10 years, and the two were getting ready to celebrate their upcoming anniversary. Unfortunately, this joy would be short-lived when Amy mysteriously vanished. Amy was last seen at her home in the 1400 block of Elm Street at around 4.30 a.m. on June 24, 2013. According to her husband, Joseph, she left their home at 4.30 a.m. but didn't state where she was going. Two hours later, Joseph reported that his wife called him asking for $10, to which he refused. This caused an argument between the two, and this was the last time Amy was ever seen. Days later, Amy was reported missing to the Halifax County Sheriff's Office, which had been conducting their investigation ever since. Ten years have now passed since Amy's disappearance, and the Halifax County Sheriff is still no closer to uncovering the truth of what happened that June morning. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Halifax County Sheriff's Office at 252-583-8201. Quoting case number, 1301050. Number 7. In 2006, the International Astronomical Union officially stripped Pluto of its prestige as a planet. It's now considered a dwarf planet and therefore no longer fits into our solar system. Since 2006, we've been living with eight, not nine, planets, despite what you might have learned in school. While we have lost Pluto as a planet, it's also possible we've gained another, the so-called Ninth Planet. The Ninth Planet is its current working name, and no official name has been created. According to reports, this planet within our observable universe is actually unobservable, leading to controversy. Scientists have stated that they firmly believe in its existence, thanks to the gravitational pull it displays within its orbit. Regarding orbit, Planet 9 is thought to travel around the Sun every 7,400 years. NASA has even estimated that it may take Planet 9 between 10,000 and 20,000 years to orbit the Sun. The planet is also believed to have 10 times the mass of Earth, and scientists are highly excited by the new developments in space travel. While the planet is much, much further away than first anticipated, NASA is hopeful that they'll either prove or disprove Planet Nine's existence once and for all very soon. Number 6 Victoria Hall was a bright and kind young woman who had the entire world at her feet. Residing in Suffolk, Victoria was just beginning to find her place in the world when it was cruelly snatched from her. On September 18, 1999, Victoria and her friends visited Felixstowe for the night. The two hit several bars before having their final drinks at Bandbox Nightclub at around 1 a.m. The two had decided to walk home and, according to the friend, they separated at around 2.20 a.m. at High Road in Faulkner's Way, just meters from Victoria's home. Unfortunately, Victoria didn't make it home that evening and she was reported missing to the Suffolk police hours later. Several days of torment followed for the Halls as they waited desperately for any news on their daughter. On September 24th, a dog walker, walking their dog off of Creeding Lane in Creeding St. Peter, called the Suffolk police to report that they'd discovered a body. When police arrived, their hearts sank. It was Victoria Hall. Creeding St. Peter is around 25 miles from her home in Felixstowe. Despite a massive inquiry that spanned many years and used as many resources as possible, nobody has ever been convicted for taking Victoria's life. Anyone with information is urged to contact the Suffolk Police at unsolvedcasereviews at norfolk.police.uk. Number 5 In July of 2022, the family and friends of 34-year-old Carlos Edward Tavares noticed a distinct change in him. He seemed extraordinarily paranoid and told his mother that people were trying to hunt him down and hurt him. This behavior had been culminating for weeks, and on one occasion, Carlos had burned his own mattress and rearranged furniture. Unfortunately, on July 31st, 2022, Carlos took his final steps along Faith Street in Hastings, Florida, and has not been seen or heard from since. Due to his odd behavior, there is a grave concern for his well-being, and he likely needs psychiatric intervention. Anyone with information is asked to contact Cheyenne Cruel of the St. John's County Sheriff's Office at 904-824-8304.
Number 4. In 1998, Dr. Robert Carr commissioned an excavation at Bricknell Point, close to low-rise building apartments. Many of the buildings in the area had been constructed in the 1950s, and Dr. Carr and his team were eager to see what lay beneath. In 1998, work began, and within a few weeks, the group had struck gold. The group first came across what's now known as the Miami Hole, a perfectly cut circle measuring 38 feet with 24 separate holes inside. It took the group several weeks to unearth all of the dirt within the gigantic hole, and the more they dug, the more they found. They discovered the 24 holes had been carved into the limestone and likely held many treasures, and they were right. Carbon dating was performed on charcoal found in the pit, which dated the circle between 1800 and 2000 years old. Dr. Carr and his team theorized that Tequesta people, a Native American tribe, were responsible for the pit. The work in the Miami Circle continued well into 1999, and the discoveries continued. Countless pieces of pottery, bone, shell, and stones were found deep within the pit and the 24 circles. At the time, Dr. Carr even boldly stated the Miami Circle was likely the only cut-in-rock prehistoric structural footprint in North America. Unfortunately, the Miami Circle drew enormous media attention, and the attention quickly grew out of hand. The work of Dr. Carr and his team was impeded so frequently that the entire excavation was shut down. According to reports, the discoveries at the Miami Circle were deemed so culturally significant that the government purchased the land from a private developer to preserve it. Whatever else lies beneath the dirt in the Miami Circle will likely remain undiscovered until archaeologists are allowed down there again. Number 3 67-year-old Milton H. Crocker disappeared under disturbing circumstances. He was last seen in his home in Boquilia, Florida on January 4, 2019. Milton's disappearance was not realized until his friend received an envelope with a few hundred dollars, two lottery tickets, the keys to his truck, and a letter on how to handle his affairs. Milton's friend was immediately concerned and rushed to his friend's place. It was utterly deserted when he arrived, and there was no sign of Milton. He had also left behind his beloved truck. The only things Milton had taken with him were two hand weapons. Unfortunately, there have still been few updates in Milton's case, and it's fallen to a standstill. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Lee County Sheriff's Office at 239-477-1000 quoting case number 1900654151 number 2 on august 27 1974 a local farmer in cockley clay norfolk would make a shocking discovery as he was out walking his fields he came across the headless body of a white woman between the ages of 23 and 35 5 foot to 5 foot 2 the farmer ran back to his home as fast as he could and summoned the local police to the scene. When the police arrived, they found the woman's headless body had callously been wrapped in plastic sheets with the words National Cash Registers written on them. Her hands and feet had also been bound. The only other clue investigators had to work with was the pink Marks and Spencer's dressing gown she was found wearing. The investigation quickly went cold, but as time passed, technology caught up. According to the Daily Mail, forensic investigators checked her stomach contents and noticed her diet mainly consisted of fish and shellfish. This seemingly meaningless fact actually led the police to a potential victim. This woman, who was known only as the Duchess, was said to have come from Denmark. The Duchess spent her time working the streets and pursuing the docks of Great Yarmouth. She was known for her eccentricity and her love of fish. Unfortunately, nobody knew her by her real name and all leads in the case have since gone cold. The police did receive another glimmer of hope when the rope used to bind her was examined. The rope was made in Dundee, Scotland by a company that made agricultural equipment. Given the location of her body, agricultural equipment fit into the case. The farmer who discovered her body was cleared as a suspect, as were many other farmers in the area. At least 50 women and their families have been contacted and asked to provide a DNA sample for comparison, but none of them have ever come back positive. Without her head or any new leads, it's likely the case of the Norfolk headless body 
will run cold. Number 1 for 37-year-old Lorraine Turner, her two children were the light of her life. Lorraine worked hard to give her children the life they deserved, and in return, they showed her the same amount of love back. Lorraine had worked as a journalist in Norwich, and was well-respected in the field. In 2002, the Turners' lives would reach a standstill after a chance discovery. On the afternoon of August 17, 2002, Lorraine's two children, Jasmine and Jordan, ran excitedly into their Desmond Drive home, looking for their mother. When they reached the bottom of the stairs, they froze in terror. They had just discovered their mother's body at the bottom of the stairs, littered with injuries and abrasions. The pair ran to their neighbor's house as fast as possible, and the police were on the scene within minutes. The police determined Lorraine had been attacked from behind, suffering three heavy blows to the back of the neck. The attack left her with a broken skull and massive brain damage. Unfortunately, she didn't survive her injuries, leaving her family devastated. When Lorraine's body reached the coroner, they commented her wounds were also in line with the fall down the stairs, an opinion many would call into question later on. Unfortunately, Lorraine's case is open and ongoing, so information is limited. There was a glimmer of hope in 2003 when an arrest was made, but the man was released before the case could be brought to trial and for his privacy, his name has been withheld. Aside from this one suspect, investigators in Lorraine's case have fallen short. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Norfolk Constabulary's cold case team at 01953-423-819.